Yes. Here. Stephen Lovell. Here. Jason Bunting. Present. James Curley. Present. Patrick Killian. Present. Mike Ingalls. Here. Paul Ritter. Okay. Did you look okay? Just, I am adding a few things to the agenda just so you know. Under others to come for the committee, I'm going to comment on this pending solar text amendment to the regulations. I'm going to give you an update on the electronic recycling issues to go along with that. Uh, John Slego, the Planning Commission meeting, mentioned how to maybe consider limiting solar areas, solar farm areas, in regards to that. So that's kind of where we're going to update you on a few things there. I will move as amended, Darrell. I will second. by Jason, second by Patrick. Any discussion? On the favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes of the previous meeting. Any changes? Motion by Steve, second by Jim. All in favor say aye. 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 That's for which guys for? No, I still don't know. <laughs> you weren't at the meeting? <laughs> okay. You're at this one. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. All right, business to come before the uh, committee. Information is provided to the committee pertaining to uh, solar farms one and two. Okay. I just gave you the binders in regards to these. These will be the solar farms will come before you next month or um, maybe in a couple months. The, the zoning board's still looking them over. The zoning board started the hearings on. Um, they lacked a little bit of information in that. They did not have all of the, uh, the soil and water. The soil and water on the property value issues that had been before them did not come before them. So those are the issues that are there. Uh, so they're going to get those and bring them back with you in regards to that. There might have been one. Else. So they're going to kind of clean it up and get it to you in regards to that. These are two solar farms that are located next to each other. So it's Vermilion 1 and Vermilion 2. Um, one of the reasons for this is that if um, at this point in time, from what's being said, is the state of Illinois is going to be accepting applications around January 19th of next year for them to approve these. They're probably going to approve around 180 solar farms. They're probably going to have somewhere between 350 to 600 applications in order, in order to do that. So they're going to set some sort of a lottery or some sort of an approval process in order to have these solar farm sites approved. So this company is, they're allowed to, currently allowed, according to state regulations, to put two of these next to each other. It could, could be a could be one large one, it could be two, whatever the case may be. Um, so they're kind of hedging their bets, and they're going to have two apply for and move forward with that. They are, the, the site plan that's part of this is amended as far as the, the zoning board's concerned. The only amendment to it is that they want the flexibility that if, only, if they only have one of them approved, they want to develop the, the north side of the property as opposed to the so, so, so Vermilion 1 is approved, then they're okay. If Vermilion 2 is approved, then it's the south. They prefer to move everything up to the north to go along with that and, and have that. So they want some flexibility as far as that goes. So they, they change that and they put a note in it in order to do that. Uh, this, this is a site that is located just to the, out by the warden's cabin on south of Pontiac is where it's located at. They'll be hooking into the transmission line that's along the abandoned railroad track that brings the power in from McDowell substation into Pontiac on the street. Or so that's kind of where it's located at in regards to that. So they have some flexibility. What's the difference in the size? Is it similar, same? Well, they're both 20 acres, right? They're same. both, they're two, both megawatts. two megawatts uh, in regards to that. Uh, when we get when I get down to the solar regulation text amendment, there's something I'm going to kind of bring up. Okay. Kind of continue our discussion on fencing on that because this had a different element to kind of play into that. And I want to make it part but, of that discussion. But you just saying that you've got two options, if one and two. If yeah. one doesn't make it and two does, they can they have the ability to switch two to one. The site, or, the site. The, okay. Yeah. They don't want to. They want to utilize the property as best as they can. They want yes. to put it in the middle. Of nowhere else. Okay. Just. What's the reasoning behind the state only approving maybe a half? I mean, 
the part of the money to pay in your comment bill goes into uh, clean energy. Renewable. Renewable energy. energy. <laughs> and, and, and there's a certain pot of money for that to go forward with that. So part of the, there is incentives for them to develop these sites. Okay. So the incentives that are available for the first go around is only enough for so many. Okay. Sorry. It's kind of a new, uh, <clears throat> you know, like the new frontier. It's not like landing on the moon, but as you've read, McLean County and Phil Dick and them guys, I mean, they keep passing all these too. And it's just, they're going to be inundated with all these applications. There's only going to be so many. And then. But uh, now I understand the progression. The reason is, for it. It's, it's the allotment of the incentives. It, 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 this will okay. progress down the road, but nobody knows if the original applications will be accepted the second time around or if they have to reapply. Will they be doing a second round in one year or be two years down the road? They don't know how. They don't know the detail. And this is, a, like you said, it's a new program. And yeah, there's only so much money right now. They figure so it out as they go along. If they add more to it in a year or yeah. two. And supposedly they have to have so many up and operational by 2030. Well, they so just extended that, right? No, the 2030 is... Is the extension? It, it is a amount, state of Illinois has a amount of energy they want produced by renewable or clean energy. And they, they consider clean energy, it's like 25 or 30% energy generated in, in the state of Illinois has to be that. And that's that's their stated goals, what it is, how they get there. Kind of John, in your mind. opinion, do you think, I mean, there's some... As everybody knows, there's marginal property in every county all over the state. Now, some of it's pretty good farm ground, some of it's not. Do you think, hypothetically, that the state will look at some of them and say, you know, this is really not really good producing farm ground. You know, it's rocky and sandy or whatever. Or do you think they're just going to say, pull them out as a lottery or... I have no idea. Do you think they'll look at the grade or the quality of the farm ground at I all? I have no idea. They're giving the state too much credit. That would take so much time. Right. Well, they just pretty much, much know a plat as far as, I mean, just like Jason's farm is probably better than somebody's. I mean, does the Farm Bureau look at that at all, or have they been with them well, back and forth? That they, they know where your high producing grounds are. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just yeah. actually, I mean, they can tell you where it's just a, taxing. A, yeah. a general answer to that is this is that ComEd has more sites allotted to it than Amarin does. So if you, if you consider the farmland in Southern Illinois poor than you consider in Northern Illinois. Doesn't matter. Then. Yeah, but you, I mean, you can get along the river and some of these yeah. spots that yeah. are not very good. Well, and I think as you can tell, these, as, the, as these landowners are bringing these proposed mm -hmm. farms to, they've already picked out the spot where they think is less, less productive farm ground, and that's where they're going to place this hole. Now it says in here, shows it here on the tracker type. Is that are these going to be the tracker that move? These, these are going to be trackers, yes. I would think those would be more uh, return on investment than one that don't move. And they won't be cost. I know, I understand. Might be higher maintenance too. So could be. Move, and then it moves, uh, we'll wear out. Yeah. Like, and, you, and you they also. You know, I mean, there's some areas you can put <coughs> some in the floodplain, but then again, they'd have to. No, they can't put them in. <laughs> well, I know, but I mean, it'd be nice if you could, other than there are going to get flooded. <laughs> so, but if you put them on fire, there. <laughs> that's all new paper. <laughs> <that's happening. laughs> We're really trying to take advantage of that worthless ground, huh? 600 feet uh, yeah. above the creek. Yeah. See this water line? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, look these over, and uh, we'll be, uh, hopefully, they'll be presenting something to us the next meeting. This community energy solar, is this the first, are these the first two proposed? The other three, the, one, one is Borrego, correct? One, the first two were Cypress Creek. Yep. One was Borrego. Yep. This is the first two from this company. Okay. Borrego has another one that's possibly going to be coming in, and there's a third company, well, like, as you know from Front Girl, there's multiple companies yeah. that are out there, so. So this is currently our third company, solar company. Yes, it's filed something, yes. And you said you want to talk about the fence later? Yes. Okay. All right. SL <coughs> wireless facilities update. Okay. We just started a discussion with this last month, and just the only thing that I've gotten out of this is there's one one county, which is Joe Davies County. They just, and I gave it part of your handout, this top sheet which says MSA. 
and they put brackets around the bottom part of it is they just took the fees that can be assessed for siting, right. permitting them, and they made that into ordinance. So they did nothing. They didn't say, okay, we're going to do this application thing. If you want to put it in here, we're going to assess these fees, and these are the fees that you're going to be assessed. So that's kind of what's out there. It is going to be the topic of uh, there's a zoning officials, state zoning officials meeting coming up, I think in the middle of this month. Um, and solar is going to be the main topic of the morning discussions in regards to that. So maybe we'll find out a little bit more of that. Well, solar is that house there, but it gives a, a good opportunity to bring up small wire of those two, possibly. We'll see, that, we'll see where that goes. So. so that's the only county that I know of other than the ones we discussed last month, that, you know, which were the larger, uh, was it Lake and DuPage that you consider it were counties outside of us. So. We'll kind of keep poking away and see what we can find out about it. So. Well, in here, did we, I, it I guess we talked about involving the highway department. It talks about right of ways, but it doesn't really talk about getting any uh, special permits or anything from. Right. It just it just discusses fees. It doesn't get into the permitting. That's their way to say, okay, we can we get some fees. So we're gonna, you know, if you're going to do it, we're going to get you a fee. But I don't know how you. I don't know how you put the mechanism together, how you get a fee without issuing some sort of permit for it. So. Okay, thanks. Bad thing. <clears throat> Solid waste report. Okay. Just to start off, you have a relatively short uh, synopsis as to the landfill issues that are going on, uh, which is part of the handout I gave to you. Um, a lot of it's normal stuff. The first one on August 8th was in regards to the MPDS uh, discharge, which was normal results in regards to that. There was some private well water sampling results that came in. Uh, There's no concerns about that. The, the results that came in are wells that were done before, maybe not the last time, but in the past years. So the results are still kind of coming in the same in regards to them, so nothing we're shaking about that. Uh, the third, third one down was the methane detection testing around the perimeter. Again, there's no methane detected in regards to that. The fourth one down, the August 17th one, was in regards to um, them wanting to increase the higher operating value in the landfill. This is a landfill well number LIDEW195A, which is a replacement landfill. They want to raise the temperature from 131, which is our maximum now, to 146. Uh, they're basically saying it's because of the decomposition of waste is creating the higher temperatures. And they get more scientific than that, but it's easier to explain that way. And the 146 was an approved temperature before, about 10 years ago, and they're having issues. And they renewed the air permit, they made them reduce it back down to the 131, so bring it up to 146 is not unusual from what they've done in the past history in regards to that, so it's kind of where it stands right now. And then the last one is there is some correspondence going back and forth between the EPA, Andrews Engineering. I think a month or two ago I told you about the annual closure, post-closure in regards to that. Um, they, they have a proposal that they plan on closing the south side of the road as far as being a landfill when they get done with capping it yet this year. I think the only capping left to do on it now is probably putting some seating on it at this point in time. And then they'll submit a report into the EPA, IEPA to say it's done, and then they're going to accept that, then they want to close it so they can start the post-closure care on that side of the road, so I'm not paying in so much money on it. Well, the EPA says, well, we don't have all the paperwork saying it's officially closed, so you got to redo everything and say, okay, this is where you want to do it, so, and then they ask for some more estimates. So that's that's what it was in regards to that. The bottom street or landfill, it's, I forgot to delete that, so I apologize for that. And then the, I gave you copies of the, of the host fees uh, reports for coming in. Uh, it's, well, it's submitted in August for the July waste that came in. It was very similar to what we've had in the past couple of months, uh, 345000 almost 346000 uh, The tonnage was 90 two and a half thousand so it's very similar to what they've done in the past and you had a copy of the treasurer's report regards to all the host fee funds in regards to that so that's fairly similar to what we've had in the past for the last few months which is 
the thing for four. I, I will say again that their waste does seem, does seem to be seasonal. Again, they're on a seasonal decline. I, don't, I think they're taking a little bit less waste than they did before, so because a lot of it's construction debris, sometimes demolition and construction debris. So as the construction season more winds it down, so does the waste wind down a little bit too. So that's what it's doing. Questions? Linda, do you have any comment? You, Linda, John, you guys toured the landfill. Do you have any you guys? I any wanted. I was just waiting for public comment, but yeah, I wanted to thank you for it. it. Was it was very interesting. I was really kind of surprised at how clean it was. You know, it's a landfill and everything, but they do a very nice job out there. And it was very interesting. Okay. I would echo that. I thought it was. I was impressed. I, yeah. They seem like they're on top of everything. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm going to stop using plastic bags at the grocery store. <laughs> Only because you've seen them blowing that day. Yeah, they're yeah, blowing yeah, everywhere yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. So, no, they try to use paper. And they, they, you know, had to pick them up, and they have a company hired to pick up all of that, and it was very nice. Yeah, it was, a, it was good. I'm glad I went. This is a good show. You any, any other comments, Steve? No, no, it was, they done a nice job. What's the one here? The reimbursed dispatch. What? That's part of the funding that goes to Emily. <clears throat> Any other questions on the line, Phil? Okay, who's the extension? Okay, I did email you a copy of the draft amendments to the 2018 post uh, fee amendment, and you got a copy in your report tonight. All this is simply doing is a, it's a three year document, and it does expire at the end of, of this year. Uh, the changes are basically the, the lighter colors that go through here because it just changes the dates. It adds an amendment to the original host agreement to make it work. And then uh, on the page, it looks like this with the tonnages and everything else like it. Um, this has only been changed to reflect the changes for the last three years. So it's basically this reflects the amount of money we're getting today because there is a CPI part of this agreement that moves into it. So when you saw the last agreement, it had what the amounts were getting three years ago, and then this is the, the CPI that comes in to play, play along with it. Again. So this is the amounts that are coming in today, and it's just projected to be extended for three years from January 1st of 2019 to December 31st of 2021. And it's the same agreement is that the amounts are there, and we'll get a CPI increase each year. I guess the important thing that in the landfill or Republic is, is agreeing to this, um, like us, uh, the landfill and Republic the budgets, and their budgets are based on the amount of waste coming in, the tonnage is coming in, and so this post fee is kind of built into their budgets. They're kind of doing the budget at the same time as we are at this particular time. So this is what they're budgeting for as an agreement moving forward in order to do that. And this is their hope for them to kind of maintain the tonnage that they're getting in. Now they have some tonnage issues as far as at the end of the year, uh, some of the existing contracts are going to run out. So they're going to try to renew those contracts and kind of keep the tonnage the same coming in based on that. So that the hope is to keep the tonnage amount about the same and keep everything running as it has it been as it had been running in the past. I guess one thing that came out at the meeting that three county board members did attend from the previous meeting we had is that as the budget process is going forward, you know, corporate is wanting them to delay their construction of the half sale from 2019 to 2020 in order for them to save money. So that was you know, so their budgets are kind of being crunched too. But this is what you have before you is just basically a continuation of what we've been doing since we adjusted the host fees um, several years ago. The way you see the tiers on here, before we did adjusted it for those that weren't here, you know, it was one flat fee coming across the scale. A series of things happened. We had a, a new governor that changed their amount of fees coming in. They expanded their landfill operation in New, new Town, Newton County in in Indiana, so and the distance is about the same, so start taking waste there. There was a new landfill that opened up in in Will County, so some of the waste that had come here was then going to 
to the Will County Landfill. There were some business changes in the area. And you know, this is a regional, you know, most of the waste comes here, comes from the Chicago land area, so it's kind of a regional landfill and make this work. Um, Republic also runs the landfill in Dixon and Morris and Otto, so, um, so it's kind of a regional thing. So this is what it is. Questions? So if I'm reading this correctly, mm -hmm. the 1 to 32,505 mm -hmm. is going to be 13 cents less. 23 cents less, excuse me. No, it's, it's, it'll be the current $5.10. It'll be the current 5 right. Ten cents. Right. Okay. And then I'll have a CPI February 1st of next year. And, okay. Now, you always want to try and maintain a level of product going in there without losing too much in the process. Sure. You see, we yeah. tried to make the center just the best the best yeah. price we never we, we've never gone bef below the first three four tiers as far as I'm, i guess four tiers for the green way so it's never started going back up and the reason why it's kind of designed to potentially go back up in there is because of when they had the massive amount of waste that's coming in here 15 years ago or so it's designed that if they're doing good business then we our business gets better too This will need a motion to uh, forward to the uh, board. I'll make a motion. Motion by Steve. Second. Second by Jim. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I could continue down on my other issues coming from the committee. Is one has to do with this, the solar tax amendment. Um, I, I have part of your packet. What I gave you was in addition to what we talked about uh, before, where the, this started out as just basically wanting to clarify solar farms being located in ag and industrial areas because of that was assumed and it didn't happen. Then the, the zoning board of appeals got into a discussion in regards to you know what consists of a commercial solar farm. So. On this page here, you see the addition of a modified description or, or whatever what a solar farm is, one of the definitions of solar farm. And the second one is an added definition of an accessory use solar farm, so that we're defining, you know, that you can put a solar farm on a, on a building and it'd be just, or on the ground, and it's accessory to the principal use. So those two that are in there. I think the zoning board is... I think at this point in time, fairly comfortable in regards to that. Going down to the bottom of the page, this had to do with the screening and fencing. This had to, this kind of reflected a change from the last time we met as a committee where the seven foot versus eight foot fence was discussed. And this was a proposal to change that height from seven to eight feet. Well, coming into the hearing with the Vermilion one and two is that they came up with a different type of fence. It's basically a, a, a nature preserve fencing where they're, they're finally being made for a fence. It's not a problem. But it basically would be a fence that they'd have wooden poles to be put on the ground, which would enclose any need for any concrete because there'd be wider wooden poles going down. And then they'd have a mesh coming on the outside, maybe a six inch by six inch mesh or a four inch by four inch mesh, but it'd be a mesh fence coming around it. Um, the theory on that is that it would keep out the large wildlife, such as the deer, but it would still allow some of the smaller wildlife to go in there since part of it on the ground would be somewhat of a habitat for pheasants, rabbits, etc., 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 and that theory would do that. So the zoning board got into a discussion as far as, as you see at the beginning of this, to be secured by a fence with a minimum height of seven or eight, for whatever the case may be. So. Everybody has proposed having a chain link fence before this, so this kind of put a new wrinkle into it. Is that they weren't opposed to an eight foot fence, doing a different type of fence, and and then the discussion got into being uh, the type of fence it should be as far as you know definition be a secured fence. At the conclusion of that conversation, the zoning board is basically at this point in time wanting to stay with the eight foot fence instead of the seven foot fence because that was what was originally proposed. 
and then they want it to be a chain link fence as opposed to this preserve fence that was, that was also proposed. Both of the reasonings, I guess, was for consistency reasons as far as the chain link fence, because the ones that have been proposed before, we're going to have a chain link fence coming in. And the eight foot fence, I guess, is just for some consistency. The eight foot fence came from the original document that was approved for solar regulations, and that was taken out of other solar regulations from different areas in regards to that. So that was the reasoning for that. So it's kind of thrown back in that. This is still going it's, to, it's tabled by the zoning board going back to them. So it's, okay, is there any need to modify this in any other way before they conclude their hearings in regards to processing this and moving on in regards to that? That's kind of the question. I guess I think, I'm not sure, I, you know, some of their, um, I'll say fault find, some of the things they find wrong don't have anything to do with zoning. I, you know, I just, I guess, the type of fence, as long as it's a secure fence, it's it's going to keep animals out, it's going to keep kids out, it's going to keep people from getting hurt. Uh, why do they care if it's a chain link fence or what type of fence it is? I just don't think that has anything to do with their job. Hey, I, mean, I, I can't answer that for you, obviously. Um, I mean, the discussion did take place, is okay, you got a seven foot, foot eight foot fence, Chain link or the nature preserve, they can be climbed. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, if they well, agree, if somebody wants, if somebody wants to do zoning, zoning. Yeah. So, well, I, yeah. so I guess I'm going back to it's you. It's not the first thing that came up that I thought they they overstepped what they should be concerned about. Uh, you know, one time there's the the property owner lived there, and they wanted to put a, a tree barricade, whatever, to block the, the owner of the property, the farm, from seeing the solar farm. Well, if they want it there, uh, why would you be concerned about it, you know? The other thing they asked was, how long that, has that farm been in the family? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, what's that got to do with zoning? Nobody's business. <laughs> I just, you know, I think that the ZBA is just, for lack of a better term, out of control. So I guess my question to you is, and this was kind of, this bond thing was put together from the result of our last committee meeting as to what was discussed last committee meeting. So are you happy with what's here now and move forward with that as opposed to changing it any further? The eight foot? No, it's, we'll be changing it to seven foot. Oh, okay, if we're going to change it to seven foot, are we going back to these people that are going to pay the extra money for an eight foot fence and tell them it's okay to go with seven foot? I think at the end of our conversation last month is that if they come back for this to be reviewed in one year to get approved, then they can, you know, maybe that's a time that they could bring it back and say, okay. Well, they may not get approved, so. Yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's a huge cost difference from that seven to eight foot. <clears throat> well, if, if we change the requirement to seven foot, why wouldn't that apply to everybody? Everybody. You know, as far as the mesh and all that, I just. But if, it, if it's okay for a game reserve, yeah, why I, is it I okay for a solar spot? That. I, I, will, I will say this the guy, the gentleman who was proposing, representing the company for this one, um, I mean, he did. I mean, he, he ended up saying, You tell us what kind of fence you want and how high we want it, and we'll do it. I mean, he looks at the. Oh, it's nice of him. He goes, he goes, It'd be more money, but I, he looks at the well, overall economy of it and says, Whoa. Yeah, well, next thing you know, we'll want a 12 foot high brick wall. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I really have 10. With gun ports. You <laughs> talk to President Trump. He's but, you know, to build it. but I guess well, we're not, we're not going to. I mean, I guess this goes back to them when uh, it's my understanding that when it comes back to us, we can do with what, what we want to. So. Uh, they give us a recommendation. We can either approve it or send it back. No, we no. can change. I don't know. We change change it. Change it. Change it. Change it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not a legal authority. I talked to our legal authority, and he said we can change it. Really? Yes. Yeah. 
They, that was wrong in the pantograph. I, mean, I thought it was I'm wrong. not talking about the pantograph okay. article. He but said, no, we've changed them before, Mike. Yeah. The VBA. Oh, I know we yeah. have. Yeah. I just here by don't know if it's spam. I see that. As long as Randy's okay with it, I'm okay think, with it. I think if you so work with the way it was originally proposed, I think if you work in the concept of the way it was originally proposed, I think that gives you a leeway to. Yeah. He said substantial change. I don't know what's. What, yeah, how do you define substantial? Yeah. And so, all so these have a uh, thing in there about weed free inside the fence? The, well, that's part of the ordinance that's there in order for them to maintain it. The difference between each one of them, each one of them proposes a different type of mixture sure. to go in with this one. This one here is proposing more of a, a rye grass underneath it, and they acknowledged it for the first three, four years. They're going to have to mow it more frequently. Six times a year, probably, and after it gets established, they can back off of it. They're looking at putting a pollinator mix around the perimeter of it so that it's not as much effective to do that. So each one of them has a little bit different viewpoint in regards to that. So, you yeah, don't, don't want to see business it is of ours. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to be on the outside. As long as they don't grow weeds, the pollinator. Well, and as long as they don't plant sheep or milkweed. Goats in, <laughs> that's that's and then they you know, eat the next ones, and I like it. Wow, yeah. that's like, um, yeah. Okay. They used to say geese eat weed. What? Put geese in there. They eat <laughs> weed. Roundup, I believe. Poop all over. <laughs> yeah. That's fertilizer. Put sheep in there. I saw that with the guy. They got. Traveling sheep and goats, they go in, they clean it up, but they eat all the pollinators too, so you gotta be careful. Then they herd them up and take them to the next place. Yeah. Bunch of gypsy sheep. No around the <laughs> Yeah. I think it looked like a woolen cat. What do you think, guys? <laughs> <laughs> money. Did you have anything else under other? Uh, I do. A couple a couple of issues. I'm gonna stay on solar for a minute. Uh, John Slay down here as part of the Regional Planning Commission, so he threw out an idea at the last planning commission meeting as far as uh, consideration of maybe limiting the areas where solar areas can be placed, kind of preservation of farmland. The idea being thrown out is there is to limit it to like a quarter section per township, which is if you have it's 160 acres times the 30 townships, which would be 4,800 acres. Each one of those is a 40 acre site, which they're not, then you'd have 120 solar farms that ultimately be approved. The problem is, can you limit them to specific areas, specific townships in order to do that? The problem I see with doing something like that, I don't know if that's a bad number, but there's some, like we're talking about quality of ground, mm -hmm. there's some quality of ground that you might as well put it all in solar farm because you're going to get less crop off from it, but there's, there's other that is Top, you know, what is it? Dwight Township is number one in in the uh, county. And, uh, no, it would be a neck row. Yeah. Round row, row. They're one and two, neck and neck. Okay. The article I saw in the paper said. No, you've seen the pantograph was already wrong. The paper they were wrong the second time. Wrong, wrong and round row. Okay. <laughs> but I guess yeah. campus is it. What's okay. the reasoning? <laughs> My reasoning was like. Uh, I remember when I first was talking with solar farms about uh, the uh, township supervisor from uh, the township that has a landfill. She's like, because they're, they're getting a solar farm. She's like, oh, they're dumping all the industrial stuff on us. Um, it, it's, and then um, a lot of people are, the big gripe of solar farms is taking up farmland. And you're taking up um, farmland. We're going to get a lot of permits, maybe, and not a few, only a few built. But... Um, my thought was keep it so that it's each township would get a, its, its fair number of solar farms rather than being all concentrated along the power lines going uh, diagonally through the county. Um, basically, spread them out a little. It really don't need the power line. I mean, it, it can, as long as it's a three-phase line, that's all they need to hook up to. They don't need to go into the high, right. high power lines. Right. Yeah, and so I thought, you know, because if you if you took all the uh, solar projects planned for this county or that will be pitched for this county and put them in one township, that would be changing the character of the township, right? But if you put the same number and you put them around the townships throughout the county, it's not really changing the character. 
By doing that, though, aren't you restricting private business? Well, that's what zoning doing. does. I mean, well, I mean, I guess I'm a great believer in a person being able to use his property the way he wants to use it, as long as it doesn't cause detriment to the neighbor, you know, to the land values adjacent and that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could say in every village you can only have one ranch home on a square on this block. And I, I just, if a person wants to have a solar farm instead of a corn farm, what business is it of ours? Well, it's it's our comprehensive plan. I mean, I mean, Chuck Chuck talked about a thing, a scoring system that they have. Our comprehensive plan has. Uh, the zoning is supposed to follow. Every decision made in the county is supposed to follow. When was and, a comprehensive plan last written or updated, Chuck? The point being, every solar farm that's been applied for fails the conditions that they're supposed to have in order to take cropland out of production. But we pass them anyway. And I got no problem with that. I'm just saying, this and, this and this probably wouldn't even stop any of these, and I'm not even trying to stop them. It would just give the perception and the feeling that we're trying to keep it from loading one area and spreading it around the county and trying to, at some level, preserve farmland, even that we're still giving a lot of permits. When you talk about preservation of farmland, these folks that are wanting to put these solar farms in, don't you think they realize where they need to be putting them in and where they need to focus a solar farm on? I mean, you would, you would like to think that the landowner knows what part of his land produces a more abundant crop than another. I, why not? Why not allow that for the landowner to, to determine where they're going to be, John? And the other thing is that the, the, the with the price of corn and some of it's beans right now, even though they have a good crop, they're still not making a heck of a lot of money off that ground that they're farming. So here's an opportunity for them to get some farm income uh, from something other than corn and beans. And, and, you know, I've seen them where they put, you know, some fields into CPR or CRP, and I've seen them where they put uh, these grass strips along waterways. Um, the government pays something for that, but not as much as they do for a solar farm. And this solar farm not only helps the farmer, but it helps the county. But I, I, I guess I would not, you know, we had one proposal where they were going to put in I don't know, like 1,200 acres of solar farm? I wouldn't. That would be terrible. Uh, I mean, that would just, that would take a, 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 little, a whole <coughs> two three, sections. four sections, yeah, a couple sections out. Okay. Yeah. Thank it's you. It's just an idea. I'm not married to it. Not, not I've got no problem with solar farm, no. except for the tax credit. <laughs> okay. Any else under other? Yeah, do you have one more issue or under other um, the electronic recycling program where we got in the state process? Um, we have been moved into a group of people who are going to be working with us in regards to uh, the recycling group, the, the state or the clearing house for this new program created seven different uh, groups that would assist us on that. And then so they put us under Sims Recycling Solutions in regards to that. And then they've, they're just kind of the parent company of it. And they have pushed us out to uh, dynamic recycling, uh, dynamic recycling company who's gonna be the ones that's actually gonna be addressing Livingston County. The surprise about all this is that got an email in the middle of August saying, okay, we're going to have a, a webinar on our 22nd. We're going to say uh, where you're at, what you're doing, have a webinar on the 22nd. Um, these people are going to be contacting you. They want to know exactly what you're going to be doing by the end of the month. So, um, so it's kind of like, okay. So I, I talked to both companies, talked to this, Mike Williams, I says, okay, we'll, we'll we're going to say we're going to try to do this electronic recycling. We signed up for four. I don't know if we could do four or not. So we'll do one for sure in Pontiac, try to do one in Dwight. I said we generally don't put these together until the first of the year. So it's kind of like, you know, we're, how do we put these together at this point in time? 
And then there's also the financing issue is, I need to know how much it's going to cost us because you need to send us that issue because they're going to recycle everything for free. They're going to provide us the truck quality for free. They're going to provide us the pallets and the gamer boxes and stuff like that. But forum day should be collected, you know, we may, you know, you want somebody from the company there to be, help you with that. If you do, then you have to pay them. There's going to be a lot of volunteers, local volunteers to do it. Um, and if you've been to in the past, you almost need to have one person there that knows what they're doing because they'll load the pallets with a special work in order to get everything on there so you can get them as much as possible on the pallets. That may be less or less because there's fewer, fewer monikers, but that was the head, mostly the monikers, most are just thrown boxes. So. Just kind of let you know it's kind of there, and we're kind of have to kind of work through the details as we move forward in regards to that. So it wasn't done. It's, okay. I think it's a good project, and it saves them throwing out along the uh, road somewhere, putting mm -hmm. waterways. What, what what will this cost us, though, Chuck? I don't know. I mean, that's the, we're that, gonna find that out. I don't think it cost you anything in the past, has it? Huh? Did it cost you anything in the past? I thought volunteers did. Uh, it it cost. Uh, some of the projects cost advertising and stuff like oh, that. There, there were some there were some costs involved in the past. Yeah. But we need to we need to figure all that out before we let's see where we're at on that. So. Do you want to tell us about your trip to the flood thing as far as I just had a meeting? Yeah, I mean they did this new group flood alliance that's going on. I uh, had another meeting in uh, Forest just last week. Um, they're gonna continue with another meeting and believe in October 9th-ish, around that day. Um, to let you know, it's kind of a new group that's kind of being patterned after the LaSalle County Ottawa area where they want to find if there's ways to reduce, mitigate issues in regards to flooding issues. Uh, this meeting really didn't, was kind of non-productive in that the discussions that took place were hopefully a lot of common sense issues, you know, what are the big problems? You know, a lot of times I bring up, you know, is the wastewater plant going to flood? Or is the water company plant, so they're going to flood? Do you, what do you have in the flood plant that can get in there? And, you know, dredging isn't the answer. It'll be even money to buy out houses, stuff like that. So be more involved with flood insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's kind of resolved around to, to go forward with the meeting coming up. Uh, in October and see where that ends with Okay. I, I talked to Randy about the court thing with the toilets at campus, and he said that uh, they were supposedly reducing the number of toilets there. Uh, the guy has been contacted or went to court, and he uh, he's supposedly reducing. But Joe says that it doesn't look like there's any less than what there was before. So. Uh, what he's telling the court is maybe not the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Um, so I, I had a chance, I went over west, so I went by that that uh, place over by the, what's called Woodland School or Woodford, whatever that school is over there, uh, and pulled up there by the river to check out that guy's yard that had all the tarps over everything and had a couple boats and different things parked. And, Neighbors are complaining because it's a mess. It's still a mess. Maybe less a mess because he's covered some things up. That more that tarps. More tarps. Uh, right. New ones. Yeah. Camouflage. Better, better looking tarps. Uh, but it's it's still there. Uh, I I asked Chuck that if they if they stop in and complain, maybe find out from the complainers what would. Because he said that most of their complaint is around the pallet business that they're kind of trying to run there, that they uh, bring in pallets and kind of recondition them and, and then uh, take them somewhere. Uh, so they're, they're kind of running a business out of the front yard there. It's not our past sheriff, is it? <laughs> no. I don't think so. It isn't? I know he's doing that. Okay. Uh, I went by, when I went to the uh, Thrasherman's, I went by the transfer people out here and uh, there was a smaller pile in the yard uh, I guess in far I know he's still going to jail he's still uh, paying fine or still being fined I don't know he's paying anything he's still being fined he's out of jail pardon he's out of jail he's out of jail mm -hmm. oh, I see 
That's good to know. Okay. Any Mile other? can get bigger. Okay. Any other issues to come for? Is he paying any fines, or do you know? It's just they just continue with copper trolls every month to see the status of the Sun trucking TV, that looks better now since things are growing up. Yeah, but since the trees have leafed off, it looks a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> no tarp. No, no, wait, no. So wait till January, Pat. Well, I know that. Yes. Uh, hopefully, you don't go by there. Yeah. <clears throat> now, he was talking about building some racks there so he could store some of these stuff. Yeah. But really, not looking for him to store more. He can do what he's got. Okay. Um, Any, uh, <laughs> answers that got a bill here from Deegan Associates, 3451.5. Motion of bill. Second. Second by Steve. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Paid. Uh, no executive session? Action resolving from none. And. Without any further ado, motion by Mike.